themselves forward for a limited number of posts. It's hoped that by lifting that restriction completely, more than 1,300 servicemen and women could be enlisted every year. The Navy and the RAF would begin admissions immediately, with the Army following suit early next year. There are separate arrangements already in place for applicants from the Republic of Ireland and Nepalese Gurkhas. Final campaigning is underway in the United States ahead of tomorrow's midterm elections, which are widely regarded as a referendum on Donald Trump's presidency. Mr. Trump has repeatedly said... ...and Tennessee, Mr. Trump did talk about the success of the country's economy. However, many of his words focused on the dangers of a Democrat victory and the threat he says is posed by a caravan of migrants slowly making their way to the US border from Central America. Speaking in Indiana and Illinois, Mr. Obama pointed out that the migrants were still hundreds of miles and many weeks away. They're even using our brave troops, sending them down American politics anymore. And with just a day to go until the vote, President Trump will hold a further three rallies in a final attempt to help Republicans keep control of Congress. President Xi of China has opened a major trade fair in Shanghai by promising to lower import tariffs and improve access to his country's markets for foreign companies. He also described the growing trade war with the US as a battering storm that China would survive. Reporting from Shanghai, Robin Brand. This is China's big attempt to show the world, but especially the White House, that its economy is opening up more. A week-long event to give a multi-billion dollar boost to imports. Thousands of foreign firms are here. President Xi pledged lower import tariffs, a change to make it easier for foreigners to set up in education and medical services here. But as is often the case, it lacked specific timings. And these pledges don't address core US complaints about forced technology technology transfer, theft of intellectual property, and the special terms that China gives to its state-run companies. There was definitely no sign that China is about to cave in the escalating trade war. <coughs> Around 180,000 people are set to receive a pay rise today due to an increase in the real living wage. The rate is set by a campaign group, the Living Wage Foundation, based on what a full-time worker with a family needs to survive. However, critics warn the increase could put further strain on financially stretched councils. Our business correspondent Joe Miller has more details. The Living Wage Foundation says a fifth of employees are still earning less than is needed to cover their basic expenses. It says higher transport costs and rising rents mean the minimum hourly wage should be £10.55 pence in London and £9 in the rest of the country. Almost 5,000 businesses, including Google, Burberry and HSBC, are currently committed to paying the higher voluntary rate, and the foundation says more than half a million low-paid workers would benefit if local authorities, universities and sports clubs came on board. But the free market Adam Smith Institute said that councils signing up to the living wage would only exacerbate the pressure on frontline services. At least half a dozen businesses in Morgan reports the decision has proved controversial. Connors residents have now all waited four weeks for their black bins to be collected. The North Wales County is the first in Wales and England to make such a change. Falkirk in Scotland did so two years ago and recycling rates have improved slightly since then. But there has been some criticism, especially from families who say that a month is simply too long between collections. Larger households of six or more will be given an extra wheelie bin to help with their waste, but some residents say that's still not enough. Last year, a year-long trial in certain areas of Conroy found that recycling rates rose by 14% and that refuse waste decreased by almost a third. Thomas Morgan reporting there, the time is 10 past 8. We make many demands of our government, some are met, some are not, that's how it is in any democracy. The minimum demand, surely, is that we and our children can walk the streets of our towns and cities in safety without fear of being stabbed. In London and other cities, that can no longer be taken for granted. In the words of a senior police officer last week, this constant torrent of every single day, another stabbing, another violent incident that we can't seem to get ahead of. It can be like the Wild West. These attacks are happening in broad daylight in public spaces. In the days following that speech, four young people were stabbed to death on the streets of London. The youngest was 15. Our reporter James Waterhouse has been talking to people in London about violent crime. 
close were they to you? Yeah, very close. How old? Um, 17. This guy is 18. Two of his friends, who were the same age, were stabbed to death last year. Oh. So in both in both cases, you don't know who did it. Not really, no. Not really, I just see it as life. You see it as life? Yeah. It is like, it happens every day. It's crazy. It's crazy. Well, I've been glassed in the face in Kanzor Eyes, and I've broken my jaw in Nine Hill. Don't sit in a fight that's not yours, and maybe look over your shoulder every now and again when you're walking out. Customer sometimes throw stuff at us, so yeah. <laughs> what do they throw? Sometimes depends. Bottles, different stuff. Yeah. And how, much it, how much is it on your mind, like every day when you're? When you're it is. It's, 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 it's a big problem coming here every day. Just a few voices from the streets of London. Victoria Atkins is the Home Office Minister. Good morning to you. Good morning, John. The Wild West.